When it comes to cooking, I enjoy trying out new recipes and pay special attention to the ingredients I use. But it was not until I received emails from a few Talking Point viewers that I really thought about my tools. Several of you wanted to know about these non-stick pans and whether the material that coats it can be toxic. So in this episode, I'll find out what makes these pans work their magic and whether we should worry about it. And the first few places I'm checking out, regular kitchens. Hello, Corinne. Hi, Diana. So, show me your kitchen. This way. The pans are here? Yes. I take out, okay? No problem. Okay, so my pans are in here. Okay. Yeah. Ta-da! Wow! Let's take a look at this. Are all your pans non-stick? Uh, yes, they are all non-stick because more easier to maintain. Two out of three of your pans are non-stick. Mm. Why do you like non-stick pans? I like non-stick pans because the washing part makes it a lot easier. I've tried washing a stainless steel pan before. So you have to pour hot water in it, you have to wait for it to disintegrate, and then you have to use the steel wool to scrub and make sure it's gone. And <laughs> it's a major nightmare. I appreciate the convenience that the non-stick pans provide me. I can use less oil and my food doesn't burn easily. And the very fact that, you know, if I were to fry an egg, um, it'll slide off really nicely. Non-stick pans are clearly popular and one particular version dominates the market. Non-stick pans coated with polytetrafluoroethylene or PTFE for short. You might know it better from its trade name, Teflon. Teflon, in the time-honoured way of most inventions, was an accidental discovery stemming from another kitchen appliance, this. In 1938, an American scientist was looking for a less toxic coolant for refrigerators. During an experiment, a chemical gas subjected to pressure and changes in temperature somehow produced Teflon. When we look at how non-stick pans are made, PTFE is applied to the metal surface of the pan. The pan is then subjected to high temperatures and you get a non-stick pan. But as with all products, other chemicals are also added in the manufacturing process. In the early 2000s, a chemical used to manufacture Teflon was linked to cancer and other health issues. The public outcry led to the chemical, known by its acronym PFOA, being phased out by most major manufacturers from 2014. When we go shopping for non-stick pans these days, we're likely to come across claims such as this. So PFOA free means it's safe, right? These chemicals are needed in making the pans. So if you change one chemical, you probably have to use a similar chemical to replace that. I'm meeting Associate Professor Tong Yen Wa to unpack the science behind our non-stick pans. PFOA is an essential chemical used in the making of the non-stick pan itself. It prevents the polymer from clumping together to form clusters, allowing you to spray coat fine particles onto the surface of the pan and give you a smooth coating. So if you have a soap bubble, the PFOA would be the bubble itself and then the polymer would be inside. In actual fact, uh, very small, almost a nanometer in size. After 2014, they have replaced PFOA with a new generation called Gen X. Gen X also acts like a soap bubble around the polymer. So Gen X and PFOA actually belong to the same class of man-made chemicals called forever chemicals. So they perform the same job, they belong to the same family of man-made chemicals. My question is, do they have the same risks? 
Unfortunately, yes. Because Gen X and PFOA, they have the similar chemical structure. So theoretically, they would have the same health effects. How likely will Forever Chemicals come off the pan and seep into my food? The way that it happens is when you're cooking the food on your pan, the heat will soften up the pan and the chemicals on top of it at around 250 degrees. Once that happens, the forever chemicals will then go into the water or the food that you have. So in normal cooking, that will not happen because we normally cook at between 150 to 200 degrees. But it could happen uh, at a very small amount. So the higher the temperature, the more chemicals will leach out and it will go into the food and go into our body after we eat it. Does it matter if my pan is scratched? Once you have a big deep scratch, what happens is you create all these grooves into the pan. Then you have more contact with these forever chemicals. So more contact point means more of the release can happen into the food. The higher the temperature of the pan, the more at risk you are of having forever chemicals as part of your meal. For most of us though, it's unlikely we'll cook at such high temperatures. But I'll soon learn that when it comes to forever chemicals, non-stick cookware does not even scratch the surface. Ever admire the way your foundation gives your face a nice glow? Wondered why your burger doesn't stick to its wrapper? Or was grateful for your baby's stain-resistant bib? These are all items that have tested positive for per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances or PFAS in recent years. They are more widely known as forever chemicals because they take a long time, if at all, to break down in the environment. If a product can resist water and grease, it likely contains a forever chemical. And this includes car windscreen treatments. We love them for their non-stick, stain-resistant and waterproofing abilities. But increasingly, forever chemicals are linked to a host of health problems from liver damage to thyroid disease and even cancer. The process of making these consumer products is causing forever chemicals to leak into our environment. They are emitted from factories into the air to fall as rain. They also go into the sea and land and find their way into our food and water supply. Forever chemicals can travel very long distances, far from the area where they were discharged. Researchers have even found them in remote areas, such as rainwater in Tibet and snow in Antarctica. This pharmaceutical scientist is particularly interested in how our bodies process forever chemicals. This chemical can actually enter our body via two routes, either orally when we ingest it or through our skin and get into our blood circulation. But surely the risk for these two routes are not the same. So in some countries, the forever chemicals can be found in uh, water, drinking water. So I would regard this as the highest risk. If the product contains forever chemicals, your exposure risk is largest when you drink it, then when you apply it. For items such as food wrappers, exposure is a two-step process. Chemicals have to leak off the wrapper into the food that you eat. While for items you wear, such as a raincoat, it's a three-step process. Chemicals have to leak off the item, come into contact with your skin and enter your skin. 
Where does the non-stick frying pan fall in this spectrum? I think I'll put it somewhere in the middle where consumer really needs to pay attention uh, to how they use this pan. Once the surface is, for example, scratched or corroded, they should really consider purchasing a new one. How long do these forever chemicals stay in our system? Normally, the liver and kidney are very efficient in eliminating foreign compounds. But in the case of forever chemicals, they are not easily broken down in the liver. And when they are being excreted by the kidney into the urine, what happens is they get reabsorbed back into the blood circulation. So what I'm hearing is that these forever chemicals are very resilient in our bloodstream. What is the problem with them staying inside our bloodstream? What we are concerned now is the chronic exposure. When the exposure is low, but yet the chemical stay in our body for such a long time, the chemical now get accumulated gradually to a higher level. Studies have shown that uh, forever chemicals, when they reach a minimum toxic level, they can cause uh, damages to organs. In some cases, it can lead to even cancer. Researchers are still trying to figure out the impact of day-to-day low-level exposure of forever chemicals. What's clear is that these chemicals do accumulate in our system over the years. And one group should be taking special precaution. Professor Jerry Chan researches the various conditions that can affect a woman's ability to conceive. Well, we did a study on Singaporean women who were attempting to get pregnant and we followed them through their pregnancy until a child is born. What we've done is to measure some of the levels of forever chemicals in the bloodstream. So the women with a higher level of forever chemicals were 40% less likely to fall pregnant within a year and 34% less likely to have a live birth at the end of the year. Women who had what the study considered higher levels of forever chemicals had 2 to 3 nanograms per milliliter in their blood. A nanogram is one billionth of a gram not visible to the naked eye. That's not a very high level in our study compared to other countries. It's just about a tenth of that compared to, let's say, the US, the Norway, or even China itself. And yet, we're able to determine a negative impact on fertility despite the low levels. If someone is trying to get pregnant or is pregnant, should she try to avoid using non-stick cookware amongst other things? Yeah, that's a difficult question to answer directly. One of the ways to reduce the risk could be the avoidance of such non-stick cookware or even um, you know, non-stick wrappers for your food. I think women should really try to avoid potentially dangerous chemicals in their body. For the chemicals, um, it is an endemic problem and it's not going to go away uh, in soon. So it will probably take the next few decades for us to understand the impact fully. Uh, so we are now really studying the impact on the children, on their puberty, their hormonal changes as they grow older. Major non-stick pan manufacturers have sought to reassure consumers, quoting other studies which say PTFE has no effects on health even when ingested. But they have also put out advisories to not overheat food in the pans. Forever chemicals can be found in almost everything. And even a small amount has been linked to health issues. So to reduce your exposure, it's easiest to focus on eliminating two main categories, greaseproof food packaging and non-stick cookware. When it comes to frying pans, what are my other options? to me. Oh my god. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Dinah, today we want to see how many perfect sunny side up eggs you can give us. Huh? This is a stainless steel? Yep. Oh my gosh. Wow. 
when it comes to regular frying pans, stainless steel pans are highly durable and resistant to damage. They are also easier to maintain compared to carbon steel and cast iron options. Oh, my egg yolk is already broken. You would think that frying an egg is quite basic, right? Not with a stainless steel pan. Very hot. The egg is getting to me. Oh my god. What else can I not do if I cannot fry an egg? I think adding more oil helps. Ah, <sighs> tenth egg. I'm not exactly proud of my fried eggs. They don't look good, but I think they'll taste okay. Mm, very nice. So I'm meeting someone who can give me tips on how to cook better with stainless steel. Anthony. Hi, Diana. Just in time. This okay. is for you. Okay. Why don't you grab a pan and we'll get started. Okay. We're going to sear some fish in these stainless steel pans. Uh, very simple. Pro tip, we need to heat up the pan properly. This is something that a lot of uh, cooks make a mistake at home of doing and then you'll find that, you know, everything kind of gets mashed up and stuck to the pan, right? Well, the reason is because when the stainless steel is properly heated up, the metal expands and it closes up all the little gaps because the metal is actually porous. So once it closes up, then the flesh of the fish won't be able to go inside and get uh, grabbed onto by the pan. How high to heat the pan up to and for how long? Stoves will vary. Okay. The way to test is, well, I'm just going to throw a bit of water in. And you see, it's like an ice skating ring. So normally when the pan is not hot enough, it'll stay in one spot and bubble like a little puddle. Oh. Right? But this, you see how they skate across the pan? Just a bit of water. Woo! Woo! I got it! I got it! So that's hot enough. That is so cool! So putting oil in the pan also adds another layer of non-stick properties to the pan. Okay. And then we're going to put it. Wow! Look at that crust! Yeah, okay. Very wow. good. Wow! I also have the crust! If the presenting thing doesn't work out, you can have a job here. <laughs> <laughs> well, if the restaurant doesn't work out, you can come and be my co-host. Okay. <laughs> this is the first time that my cross actually looks this good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is make a sauce, sauté some shallots, some mushrooms, um, and get some caramelization on them. So they will actually stick to the pan, oh. but that's actually what we want. When they stick to the pan, they start to caramelize, they start to turn brown, and that's uh, where all your flavor is going to come from. And this is the benefit of a stainless steel pan over non-stick pans. Can I caramelize stuff in a non-stick pan? It will caramelize, but you're going to be here for four hours waiting for it to caramelize. It'll take a long, long time to get that nice uh, browning. Here, you're going to see it's going to happen in like five minutes or so. Oh, oh, oh. That's it. I'm going to go out and buy a stainless steel pan. So how do you feel about stainless steel versus non-stick now? Mm. I feel empowered, like I could try this and maybe I can toggle between the stainless steel as well as the non-stick to get a better culinary effect. But then the question arises, how on earth am I going to get all this out? How can I clean it? So this is the beauty of stainless steel. Unlike a non-stick pan which they tell you don't damage, don't scratch, always use rubber uh, tools, you can just use a stainless steel sponge and just go at it and uh, scrub it all out. Yeah, really, really easy to clean. Okay, I'm gonna raid your kitchen for your okay. pants. Just be careful, these cast irons are pretty heavy, yeah? Okay. Oh, okay, they are heavy. 
do professional chefs use non-stick pans as well? This is quite niche. I would use it for something like scrambled eggs. What you have to know about non-stick pans in a heavy usage environment like a professional kitchen, they're not going to last as long. Eventually, the non-stick uh, coating starts to wear off. It'll get scratched even if you use uh, soft materials to, to cook with. So not so much in a professional kitchen. And when it comes to alternatives to non-stick cookware, this one is the stainless steel pan. This is what we used before. This is kind of like a great all-rounder, yeah, if you know how to preheat it properly. This one, this is uh, the workhorse of the professional kitchen. Uh, it's a carbon steel pan. This is a bit heavier than the stainless steel pan. This is really great for all kinds of cooking. I love to cook steaks on this, but unlike a stainless steel pan, you can't really cook anything too acidic in this. Say if you're cooking a tomato sauce, this will give it kind of a metallic taste. So you want to use something like a stainless steel pan for that. Then over here we have a cast iron pan. This is the ones that you know everybody kind of loves because they look pretty, they're very traditional. These are the ones that probably out of all four require the most maintenance to season. You'll hear people talk about seasoning your cast iron pan. You need to rub it with salt, put it in the oven, develop that non-stick coating, and then make sure you don't damage the non-stick coating. So these are really wonderful to cook with, but probably a little bit more time and care is needed. These days, I hear a lot about people using ceramic coated non-stick pan. What do you mm. think of those? Ceramic coated pans, on average, it may last about a year. Good ones will last maybe three years or so. So that's different from your traditional non-stick pan, where if you look after this and you don't scratch it, it can last indefinitely. Ceramic coated non-stick cookware are made with silica, essentially sand and other inorganic chemicals. They are perceived to be a safer non-stick cookware choice, but they generally don't last as long compared to the common non-stick versions. <sighs> Time to take stock of my frying pans. Since forever chemicals are everywhere, I think it's a bit futile for me to try to give up my regular non-stick pan. But what I've learned is that I should not heat them to over 250 degrees Celsius and always watch out for the scratches. And I think I might toggle between a non-stick pan and a stainless steel one. We can only mean one thing. I have to brush up my culinary skills. 